The supermarket I chose to attend was Metro on Gould Street. The location was convenient for me and tends to be targeted at students. As it's on Ryerson campus, it offers a student discount on Tuesdays and Thursdays, as well as air miles, and it's overall known to be a cheaper option. I wanted to observe how a supermarket that doesn't always have the best reputation for their items and is cheaper runs the store and presents the quality and assortment of their products. I immediately knew that I wanted to investigate the produce section because it's where I purchase most of my food. The produce section is normally located at the front of the store and it's usually the first aisle of customer encounters when they're in the supermarket. The produce section also has the most exposure to pesticides and tends to be the most sensitive, easily affected food that has the most physical contact before purchase. Because majority of the food is open for consumers to examine and touch before they purchase, the amount of hands that have been on your food before you buy it is very questionable. While observing, I watched many customers pick up multiple products, feel them for ripeness, carefully look at the item before they put it in their basket. I also experienced a couple of items fall to the ground and customers immediately picked them up, put them back on the shelf, and continued shopping. What surprised me most about the supermarket tour is the fact that there are so many different representations of countries within one section. I previously knew that not all of my purchases were from Canada, but I never really paid attention to where my food was coming from and how far it had to come to get into my fridge. I was also shocked that due to global trade in food commodities, food miles have drastically increased. Food miles are the distance that food travels to get from where it is produced to where it is consumed. I was even more shocked to learn about the large amount of greenhouse gas emissions that occurred during transportation alone. I never really thought about the transportation process of food. I was always just happy that I had so many available options to me. Before going to Metro, I expected to enter the supermarket to see a vast majority of selection and supplies for each and every item in store. I expected a clean, organized display that was bright and colorful. I imagined that there would be single free goods as well as packaged goods, and I expected that similar items would be organized next to each other. For example, Baked apples would be above the single apples, etc. I also expected that organics would be separate from the non-organics to divide from pesticides. These expectations changed when I noticed empty shelves and lack of produce in some areas. I questioned if it was delivery day or something. I became curious as to why there was so much empty shelf space. Items were placed in mounds to entice the consumer which is what we learned and discussed in class. If there are not many of an item, people will think something is wrong with it and they won't buy it. This is why I was confused of the lack of items on a particular shelf. However, after thinking more into the topic, I realized that potentially they did this on purpose to make the shelves more bulked up of the items they did have and the sections beside them completely empty to show that there's nothing wrong with that product and consumers can take it. As expected, the space was bright, colorful, and clean. I noticed that goods were not always in one spot. There's often a packaged bag of one item on a, a couple different shelves throughout the aisle, then single ones stacked up in different locations. I noticed that although the supermarket may provide selection of one product, they also repeat this product and different brands of this product along further in the aisle. I decided that maybe frequently displaying items across the shopper's experience may remind them that they needed this item but just missed it, causing them to pick it up and put it into their basket rather than going around again and searching for it within the aisle. I also realized that maybe the customer, maybe this would cause the customer to make an impulse purchase they might have ignored this item at the beginning of their shopping experience, but after seeing it a couple of times, they realized that they actually really wanted this item. The study accurately represented the produce section of Metro, especially when focusing on the placement of the aisle, which was at the front of the store. A typical placement in all supermarkets is the front of the store, as consumers tend to spend more money at the beginning of their shopping experience, and produce items are perishable, so the supermarket wants to move them quickly. Distancing was also represented accurately, as there was an overwhelmingly large selections of fruits and vegetables from around the world. 
There also was a vast variety of places in which these items came, anywhere from Ontario to Canada to U.S. and California to Mexico, which a lot came from Mexico, to Dominican Republic, Morocco, Peru, South Africa, Chile, Italy, and the list goes on. The PLU codes were also accurate. PLU codes tell you how your food is produced. If the number starts with an 8 and has 5 digits, it means it's GMO. If it's a 4 digit number with starting with a 3 or a 4, it means that it was conventionally grown. If it starts with a 9 and has 5 digits, it means it's organic. I was honestly surprised to see the large range of companies that the supermarket has. Although it seems like a lot, a lot of these smaller or sub-brands live under a larger corporation. These corporations make sub-brands to maybe fool the customer into buying them. These brands may have a predetermined judgment or reputation that they do not necessarily want to come up when it comes to produce. They might have more unhealthy, popular um, brands or products that they don't want to be associated with their healthy food. There were about five to six companies overall. Because it is a produce aisle, most of the food tends to be healthier. However, Metro did work to incorporate some unhealthy alternatives into this aisle. Directly next to the packaged salads, there is a large section for dressing, as well as above for the single packages of dressing. Above the packaged berries, the entire top shelf was dedicated to a sugary fruit dip, such as a cream cheese dip. I also noticed that beside the fresh cut, ready to eat fruits and vegetables, there were containers of dip such as ranch, spinach, and dill. It appeared that all of the extra dressings or dip were on top of a shelf or a bit out of the way making it harder for the customer to reach. When it comes to packaging, there was a variety of packages for different items, which included plastic bags with or without holes, netted bags, boxes, simply elastic bands around the product, plastic containers with or without holes, container bottoms with plastic saran wrap tops, plastic wrapped just fully, cut and ready cups or containers, and there are even bags with handles. When looking at organics and non-organics, Metro did a good job of having a separate section for them. However, some were completely beside each other, which kind of defeat, defeats the purpose. Particularly, I noticed this with the bananas, which were displayed next to each other and were essentially touching. The one difference besides the price and the label was that the organic bananas were wrapped up in bunches for purchases, where the non-organic ones were in clusters, but free for the customer to break apart. The other section that I noticed that the organics were next to the non-organics was with the lettuce. However, most of the organic food was packaged in plastic to hide them from the pesticides. Although I think it's really great that they are packaging these food to prevent pesticides, from getting on them. I think it also defeats the purpose of an organic selection because that choice can be ethical and conscious, but when the product uses way more plastic than a conventional brand, then it is so much waste and it makes it less appetizing to purchase them. Like all food systems, the food system has another side that is kept from the consumer eye and the knowledge of the consumer. Customers have many thoughts while at the supermarket, which unfortunately may not result, revolve around the issues brought up on this tour. Thoughts such as taste, quality and ripeness, expenses, practicability and quantity may come to mind before considering. Distancing PLU codes, which I didn't even know existed before reading the supermarket tour, and pesticides. Overall, this experience puts into question my existing ideas about supermarkets and my shopping habits. Although I buy mainly produce, I need to be careful to wash everything very thoroughly before eating it to avoid pesticides and germs from customers and the transportation process. This tour also makes me consider to buy foods that are locally grown and purchase fruits and vegetables that are in season. Buying organic is another solution, however, at this time, it is not in my budget as when I went through the aisles, it was more obvious that the organics are more expensive.